This video is about an unusual road trip. Back in the 1970s, Marvel Comics introduced a post-apocalyptic hero called Killraven. The story was that the Martian invasion from H.G. Wells' story, The War of the Worlds, it took place in the year 1901. So the Martians returned a hundred years later in the year 2001 and this time their invasion was successful. Jonathan Raven was a boy captured by the Martians and he was raised in captivity. The Martians forced him to be a gladiator and they renamed him Kill Raven. Well, eventually he escaped and he formed a community of free men. Starting in 2018, uh, Kill Raven and his friends, they traveled the United States from New York to Florida he was trying to find his brother, uh, he was trying to survive, and ultimately to overthrow the Martian occupation. This storyline was published from 1973 to 1976, and it was in the pages of Amazing Adventures, issues 18 through 39. The story picked up a few years later in Marvel graphic novel number 7 that was released in 1983. In that graphic novel, it established that the invasion took place on June 29th, 2001. June 29th, 2001. So, I decided to travel to New York City on that day and compare things with how they really looked to how they were imagined to be in the 1970s. Interestingly, in real life, Mars was in a special position called opposition. That was when the Sun, the Earth, and Mars were all lined up in a row. This opposition was from June 13th to 14th. And then Mars was at its closest position to Earth on June 21st. So, the invasion was slated to take place on June 29th. My friend Mikey Moe, he generously agreed to come with me because he was more familiar with New York City than I was. We took a train from New Haven, Connecticut to Grand Central Station. And in the very first panel of Kill Raven's first story, back in 1973, we can see the wreckage of a train from New Haven. We walk through Grand Central, as you can see in all these pictures here. There was an area with vendors and restaurants and we had to go up the stairs just like in the comic and kill raven came up the stairs and here is the large area on street level once we we left grand central station we walked about four blocks west we were going down east 42nd street to 7th avenue in the comic kill raven meets the Sirens of 7th Avenue. According to mythology, Sirens were women who lured men to their death. The ones Killraven encountered, they were Martian collaborators, and they were trying to hypnotize him somehow with their special powers, but he had powers of his own and he was immune to their hypnotism. What I want to draw attention to here was there was uh, a sign in the panel there that says Broadway and here we find what could be the very same sign Broadway and Broadway 7th Avenue that is Times Square according to Wikipedia Times Square is a major commercial intersection tourist destination entertainment hub and neighborhood in Midtown Manhattan New York City it's formed by the junction of Broadway, 7th Avenue, and 42nd Street. So we can see some of the big buildings there, the advertising. By coincidence, on that day, uh, we were told that Angelina Jolie was there filming her latest movie role. In April 2002, a movie came out called Life or Something Like It, and evidently that's what she recorded that day, or at least uh, a part of it that scene. 
I thought it was a cool coincidence. One of these billboards is advertising Planet of the Apes, which is known for being kind of a science fiction, science fantasy, post-apocalyptic series. Our next stop was the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and that was about two miles away. We walked down 7th Avenue to East 59th Street, where, the, where Central Park is, and then we walked down to the Metropolitan Museum. The Met is notable in the comics for where Kill Raven and his friends, they got equipped. Here we see them fighting Martians and Martian agents on the steps. And here we see the actual steps, how they looked on that day. Once they were inside, well, Kill Raven is saying that it's a museum filled with all the weapons man has ever created. There's some views of the lobby. Now, it looks like the first room that Kill Raven and uh, his buddy Mashula go into has Egyptian art in it. And that could be this recreated temple here inside the museum. Looks like he hopped on one of those statues and made them fall over. He would have had to go through a number of other rooms. This one has Greek, Babylonian, maybe Assyrian artifacts in it helmet. Finally, we come to a room where there are weapons. Here are crossbows. So Kill Raven's friend, Meshula, his uh, weapon of choice is the crossbow. We've seen some real ones and now it looks like he goes into a display case and he picks one of them up. After that, they go into a room that seems to have suits of armor, medieval weapons. Here's what the, the room looks like in real life. You see Kilraven reaching for a spear to check it out. He finds some swords. And the next thing you know, he's wearing his iconic costume, somehow scavenged from medieval outfits. Now after that, Kill Raven and Mashula, they had what they came for. They left the museum, but Mikey Mo and I continued through looking at various paintings. I liked this statue here that showed Moses with the Ten Commandments, written in Japanese, and Moses has some horns. Here's a display with one of the jars that the Dead Sea Scrolls are found in, along with various biblical artifacts. So that was our tour of Grand Central Station, Times Square, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art on June 29th, 2001, which was Invasion Day.